Welcome to St. Margaret. We especially greet all visitors and guests who are with us to share in today's liturgy. We ask that you please silence all cell phones and electronic devices. This special collection this weekend is for Catholic University of America. Please place your contributions in the basket marked Catholic University. Today's Mass is being offered for Don Bankston, Scott Bernard, Philip Brabham, Teresa Christina, Jimmy DeRus, Joyce and Sonny Fideli, Robert Fasakerly III, Homer Gaspard, Joe Henwinkle Sr., Mary Joel and William Uhas, Helen Carrick, Francis Cronledge, Daniel Kropog, John Kropog, Vernon Landry Jr., Vernon and Dorothy Landry, Ray J. Louvier, Mike Michon, Bill Moran, Lynette Piffner, Peter J. and Elizabeth Piffner, Ann Sherman, Andrew and Irene Cisak, and Freddie Varisco. Today's readings are for those who may have assumed that responding to God's call would be easy. The prophets, Jesus, the early Christians, none were spared from negative consequences or pain in responding to that call. No matter what occurs, we know that God is with us. Please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In order for us to be winners for Christ, we first must become losers. For the times in which we failed to simply sacrifice the things that get in the way of our relationship with our God, we pause now and ask him for his mercy and forgiveness. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy, Kyrie eleison. Lord, have mercy, Kyrie eleison. You came to call sinners, Christ have mercy. Christ Christ have mercy, Christ eleison. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy, Christ Lord, have mercy, Kyrie eleison. May 
Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks. For your great glory, Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High. Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. Let us pray. God of might, giver of every good gift, Put into our hearts the love of your name, so that by deepening our sense of reverence, you may nurture in us what is good, and by your watchful care, keep safe what you have nurtured. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. You you duped me, O Lord, and I let myself be duped. You were too strong for me, and you triumphed. All the day I am an object of laughter. Everyone mocks me. Whenever I speak, I must cry out. Violence and outrage is my message. The word of the Lord has brought me derision and reproach all the day. I say to myself, I will not mention him. I will not speak his name no more. But then it becomes like fire burning in my heart, imprisoned in my bones. I grow weary holding it in. I cannot endure it. The word of the Lord. My soul is thirsting for you, O Lord, thirsting for you, my God. My soul is thirsting for you, O Lord, thirsting for you, my God. God, you are my God, at dawn I seek you, for you my soul is thirsting, for you my flesh is pining, like a dry weary land without water. My soul is thirsting for you, O Lord, thirsting for you, my God. 
for you in the sanctuary to behold your strength and your glory. Your loving mercy is better than life. My lips will speak your praise. My soul is thirsting for you, O Lord, thirsting for you, my God. I will bless you all my life. In your name I will lift up my hands. My soul shall be filled as with a banquet. With joyful lips my mouth shall praise you. My soul is thirsting for you, O Lord. Thirsting for you, my God. For you have been my strength. In the shadow of your wings I rejoice, my soul clings fast to you. Your right hand upholds me. My soul is thirsting for you, O Lord, thirsting for you, my God. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. I urge you, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God, your spiritual worship. Do not conform yourselves to this age, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and pleasing and perfect. The word of the Lord. Jesus Christ, enlighten the eyes of our hearts, that we may know what is the hope that belongs to our call. Hallelujah. 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 The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer greatly from the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed, and on the third day be raised. Then Peter took Jesus aside and began to rebuke him. God forbid, Lord, no such thing shall ever happen to you. He turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are an obstacle to me. You are thinking not as God does, but as human beings do. Then Jesus said to his disciples, Whoever wishes to come after me must deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. For whoever wishes to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. What profit would there be for one to gain the whole world and forfeit his life? Or what can one give in exchange for his life? For the Son of Man will come with his angels in his Father's glory, and then he will repay all according to his conduct. 
The Gospel of the Lord. Got to tell you guys something. I'm a loser. Oh, I really am. It's been a pattern throughout my entire childhood. Uh, you know, for example, I was never the first kid always picked on the kickball team, right? Because I was not necessarily the most agile of players that would be out there. When it came time for the science fair, I won second place, which means I didn't win first place, which really made me a, a loser, right? Could have been the valedictorian of my class if I would have actually done my homework a little bit more and read a little bit more appropriately, but I didn't. And as a result, I wasn't first place or second place with that one. Absolute loser. But the worst, the absolute worst, was when I was a little bitty kid. The Louisiana lottery had just come out, and we had the local Cracker Barrel in New Roads. So mom decided, you know, we're going to get out of this plight of misery and destitute that we all live in. We're going to go get a lottery ticket. Now, what's the chance of actually winning the lottery? I don't know what the statistics are, but I can tell you it's not pretty good. But regardless, mom told me, she said, since this is a new thing, I'm going to give you one of the lottery blanks, and you're going to pick the six numbers in the good old Louisiana lottery. So we went and made our expedition to Cracker Barrel. I lived in Morganza, okay? Ain't a lot going on in Morganza. And at least I got to go get one of the big old 26-ounce uh, colas or whatever the case was. So regardless, it was a good field trip for me. She gave me the lottery blank with my pencil, and I started to bubble in the numbers that I had chosen. And of course, I prognosticated about what were going to be the most appropriate numbers, right? It was based on birthdays minus two times four plus one, or whatever the, the equation was that I had. But I knew that I had the magical ones. And in the six numbers that I picked, I ended up on the same blank picking the numbers 14 and 15 and 16 in succession. My mother, being the good logical person that she is, once she got the lottery blank and we were proceeding to the checkout counter, looked at it and said, now you know the statistics of winning the lottery are pretty bad already, and then picking 14, 15, and 16 on the same blank makes it even all that much worse. So she grabs her pencil and she scratches out the 16, and she ends up picking another number on the lottery blank. Regardless, I had my 20-whatever-ounce cola in my hand. I was good to go, and there we got in the car and made our way back to the metropolis of Morganza. Now, it was a Saturday morning when we had done that. Later that Saturday afternoon, I was busy on the floor in front of the television, engaged in things that I usually would do. I believe that night my he-man was actually cutting off the head of my sister's Barbie doll, or whatever the case may have been. Uh, but regardless... It was right before the 10 o'clock newscast was to come on, and I don't know if uh, times must have been pretty slow for us, but they actually would broadcast the picking of the lottery numbers. And the lottery was new, but this time, this particular weekend, nobody had won it for a while, so the jackpot was going to be $30 million, cha-ching. So when I knew the lottery was about to come home, I took Barbie's head, slung it aside, got up, got my little notepad, and got my ink pen and started writing down all of the numbers as the balls were picked. And sure enough, guess what had happened? They picked every one of the numbers that I originally had on the blank. I was a winner until mother took that 16 and scratched it off to pick another number that was on the lottery blank that night. So as a result, instead of us enjoying opulence and $30 million, no, no, we had five of the six numbers, which meant that we got to settle for the second prize, a whopping $1,500 instead. Needless to say, in my anger, as I had Barbie massacred in front of me, I looked next at my mother because she was the one that was about to get whatever rampage that was coming to me, right? Because what had we done? This was an opportunity for me to be absolutely wealthy, rich, beyond my wildest comprehension. And instead, losers. Second place prize, $1,500. Now, for me, that was a lot of money back then, but in retrospect, what is that compared to $30 million? 
Now, I told my mother that I would not be speaking to her for the next six months or so, and then immediately I went to my room, and I came back and talked to her about five minutes later. Uh, But you get the point about winning and losing sometimes. Now, I start to dream and think sometimes, had I won that $30 million, what would I have done with it? Well, there would have been mansions built, of course, nice, shiny new cars, somebody serving me my scotch on a silver tray. Uh, Needless to say, you probably wouldn't have the illustrious, wonderful pastor that you see here before you. But God has a strange sort of twisted sense of humor sometimes, right? And boy, did it ever teach me a lesson. Is that the stuff that you really need? You want to look at statistics, go and look and see about the people that actually win the lottery. Before you know it, they're either bankrupt or they're in some type of drug rehabilitation center, whatever the case might be. I didn't need all of that stuff. And while the lure of having a little bit of cash would have been pretty good, in the long run, God, I think, has a better plan. God knows exactly what he's doing, even though at the moment I may have not understood it either. It's really the message that's front and center of the gospel today. In order for us to be winners for Christ, we have to be comfortable with first becoming losers for the sake of the kingdom. None of us want to be considered losers. We want to be best, or at least part of that top tier. But as today's scriptures reveal to us, what is God actually inviting us to lose ultimately? It's the attachments that we have to things that we believe bring us fulfillment, but ultimately really mean nothing nonetheless. And instead, I think what God is asking us to do is to lose those attachments so that we can make room in our hearts for him and so that we can understand exactly what God is calling us to do in terms of our evangelization. Poor Peter. Last weekend, he got the goal star, This weekend, he gets a kick in the pants instead. Uh, Jesus and his disciples continue to walk around, and before you know it, after all these parables and miraculous tellings, he looks at them and says very simply and squarely, guys, in order for me to be able to be redeemed, first I have to suffer and ultimately carry my cross. In order for me to be a winner, I first have to become a loser. Now, imagine yourself as one of the apostles having witnessed these miraculous things that had taken place for so long. And such a countercultural reversal of understanding really would have shaken these men to their very core. So much so, leave it to impetuous Peter that he does the same thing that he did in last weekend's gospel. This time he pulls Jesus aside and says, "Uh uh-uh, not you, Lord. Maybe other people might have to deal with that, but remember, you're the Messiah, you're the Christ, you're the Son of God. And if you are, you shouldn't have to deal with any of that stuff. Now, of course, Jesus ends up calling him a devil. Satan, get behind me. But what is he ultimately telling Peter? Stop trying to tempt me with the things that you think I need in order for salvation to be won. Who's God? It's Jesus, not you, Peter. And allow me the opportunity to show you the great reversal of fortune. Because in that great reversal really comes the fullness of the wisdom of God. It's not in all the trappings. It's actually in simple elegance. That's where you can find out the truth of who God is. It's by tearing all those things apart that we think we need, but instead divulging ourselves of those in order for us to make room for God ultimately each and every day. I don't know about you, but I think today's gospel invitation serves as a firm reminder for us to start thinking about the attachments to which we're really attached, and to begin to ask ourselves a fundamental question. Do any of those things get in the way? Do they monopolize us and prevent us from coming to understand the fullness of the kingdom of God? Do we think that we absolutely have to have these things in order for us to be able to survive? Or if they were not here tomorrow, would we be able to go on without them? We start thinking about the laundry list of things that we think we need. But then God ultimately shows us, no, you really don't need so many of those. 
And I don't think it's ironical that today's gospel falls on the weekend that it falls on. Fifteen years ago, a lot of people in this church were dealing with that very precise question. Katrina came into greater New Orleans and it affected our way of life here in Louisiana like tomorrow. Just earlier this week, people in Lake Charles were having to deal with the same question. And I'll look at it. I remember times in my priesthood that I had to do the same thing. I thought, oh my gosh, in order for me to survive, I need air conditioning and good food and housing and all those other things. But do you really need them? When I was the associate pastor over in Napoleonville and Labdaville and Plattenville, that was the time that Hurricane Gustav came in. And it was really ground zero for the hurricane, not as perhaps big and ugly as some of the other ones, but it did its damage nonetheless. All the transmission lines for those bayou towns happened to run through bayou corn. And before you know it, the transmission lines fell right in the middle of the bayou. And how do you pick that stuff back up in order to bring power back? First day after the hurricanes, usually not too bad. Nice little breeze a blowing. But then after that, with no generator, ooh, it gets pretty ugly, right? I thought, oh my God, my skin's going to melt off because I'm not going to be able to deal with this heat. God shows you what you need when you need it. You know how long we didn't have electricity? 30 days at the rectory. No generator whatsoever. But in the middle of that came blessings galore. Because you got to see that entire community come together to unite for a single common purpose with no issues about race or religion or creed or any of the things that ultimately separate us. We were able to come together. Why? Because we lost so much. We were all losers. But at the same token, it actually made us winners in God's sight. Why? Because we joined together, arm in arm, hand in hand, and we built that town and community. And that was in Bayou Land, but that happened in New Orleans too. And if you go and you watch this happen in Lake Charles, it's the same thing over and over and over again. God seems to tell us by invitation almost, stop trying to think about the things that you think you need and instead focus on the things that are most essential. And what are the essential things that we need? Well, if I have to start boiling down, it's really not all that much. We think we need transportation to get to work, but we really don't. Sometimes we could flag a ride there. We think we need cash in order for it to be able to happen but there are mendicant orders in the church that survive actually begging people for what they need. That we think we need the air condition and the plush house and the nice warm meal, but we could survive on MREs and Vienna sausage for a little while. Uh, no, when we boil down, there are two things I think we need more than anything else. That's God and our relationship with everybody else. And there's really nothing else that exists outside of it. Why was Jesus incarnate? Why did God become man? to show us who God was and that God was in a relationship with us. And outside of that, there was nothing else Jesus needed in his mission in order for it to be able to be fulfilled. What are the things that you need right now in your life? And if you got a long laundry list, try not to tempt God so much because he'll show to you over and over again, those things are really not absolutely essential. Focus on the things that matters, the things that are eternal, the things that never really go away. Focus on God and your relationship with him. And focus on all these squirrely people that are sitting next to you in the church, the ones that are going to get you through the dark, difficult times and are going to help bring healing whenever we feel like ultimate losers. But boy, that's the good news of the gospel. Because when we're down at the very bottom of it all, God takes all of those difficult things and brings new light out of them in abundance. As we prepare to celebrate the Eucharist today, are you comfortable with being a loser in order to become a winner? Let's ask God for the grace and the courage to be able to understand what it is that we need in order to give us life so that we can preach that good news that it's not all that much and it's in simplicity of our life that we really find great riches. Together we profess our faith in a God who invites us to deeper relationship with him and with one another. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. 
I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things are made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds in the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Brothers and sisters, as we seek to follow Christ, let us turn to him for the grace and strength to do the will of the Father. That our country and all countries in the world would bring diverse people together by mutual respect and goodwill to promote peace and justice for all, we pray to the Lord. That those who labor benefit from fairness and integrity among employees and employers And for all who are without a job, or who are unfulfilling in their jobs, we pray to to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who suffer with the coronavirus and for their families, caretakers, and medical staff, may God spare them suffering and bring them healing and hope. We pray to the Lord. For For those affected by the ravages of Hurricane Laura, may God grant them a speedy recovery through the help of us Christians. We pray to the Lord for continued protection for our Gulf Coast from the ravages of storms and floods throughout the hurricane season. We pray to the Lord that those who have died believing in Christ may share in the glory of his resurrection. We pray to the Lord in silence. We pray for our needs and the needs of the world through Jesus who gave himself up for sinners. God, you know our human needs and our weaknesses. Transform us with your spirit so that as true disciples we may live in your love and carry our crosses each day in our journey to eternal life. Through Christ our Lord, amen. Before we continue on with Mass, I'd like to read a letter from Bishop Duca. He's asked us to read this throughout all of our different churches throughout the Diocese of Baton Rouge, especially in light of the events of the hurricane recently this week. Uh, Brothers and sisters in Christ, I'm grateful to God that the people of our diocese were mostly spared from the ravages of Hurricane Laura. However, the hurricane inflicted devastating and long-lasting damage to the people of southwest and northwest areas of Louisiana, particularly those living in the Diocese of Lake Charles. In response, the Diocese of Baton Rouge will be joining other dioceses, groups, and individuals to offer assistance in this time of need in the following ways. First, beginning this weekend, our diocese will provide an online giving portal for Hurricane Laura disaster relief on the diocesan webpage. Once on the webpage, the Give Now button will allow contributions to be made specifically to the Diocese of Lake Charles and others to provide direct relief to the victims of Hurricane Laura and to sustain the charitable and spiritual work of the church in these affected parts of Louisiana. Second, this weekend and next weekend, August 29 and 30 and September 5 and 6, I'm asking a parish of the Diocese of Baton Rouge to hold a special collection for the Hurricane Laura disaster relief, which will be forwarded to the Diocese of Lake Charles. These contributions and others will provide relief to the victims of Laura and sustain the charitable and spiritual works of the church in these affected parts of Louisiana. Online donations can also be made through the Catholic Charities website. Catholic Charities in the Diocese of Baton Rouge was active the day after the hurricane passed, assisting evacuees in Baton Rouge that were directed to local hotels rather than shelters because of the coronavirus pandemic. 
Our Catholic Charities is working with the Catholic Charities of Lake Charles and Acadiana and the Diocese of Alexandria to help assess needs and distribute relief. Donations to Catholic Charities will be used to help victims of Hurricane Laura in these affected areas. We have all known the perils and losses of hurricanes and floods throughout our own diocese in history, and we have received generous support from the dioceses of the province and from people across the United States who wanted to show their love, concern, and support in the long, hard work of recovery and rebuilding. While it's not possible to address every need, together as a diocese, we can make a difference in the lives of many who need help in recovering their lives. We can do so in a spirit of generosity, grateful to God for all gifts. Please let us give back generously as we have received, in hope, Bishop Michael Duca. So as you heard the bishop's invitation, we will have a basket in the back of the church the next couple of weekends to assist those victims. As you all know, if you've read on our Facebook page or you've seen on our website or our video, we always do our little helping hands ministry where we go out and actually give direct support in the form of gift cards. You can contribute to us by buying those gift cards, going on our website, or looking at our PayPal account. All of that stuff is found online, and we appreciate your generosity. For the past several years, we've adopted a different parish and a different diet sees when a hurricane has done its destruction, and that's our plan to do so. I'm good friends with Father Reuben Buller. He's the vicar general for the Diocese of Lake Charles. We've been talking once and twice a day about their specific needs, and he's been sending some photos. They are absolutely catastrophic. Uh, the most touching one that I saw was in a little town called Creole, Louisiana. It's right outside of Cameron, where the hurricane actually came ashore. The church has devastated itself, but the most uh, touching an emotional picture for me, uh, their parish mausoleum, which contains all of their dead, the hurricane actually ripped the doors of the mausoleum off, and all of the bodies are gone. They're somewhere within the Gulf of Mexico. So pray for those people, because their road to recovery is going to be long and harsh. We know that. We will probably be asking your assistance several times throughout the year to help these particular people get back on their feet. So we thank you in advance for your generosity in helping our friends recover. Please be generous. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May the sacred offering, O Lord, confer on us always the blessing of salvation, that what it celebrates in mystery it may accomplish in power. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by his birth he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state, and by his suffering canceled out our sins. By his rising from the dead, he has opened the way to eternal life, 
And by ascending to you, O Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith Proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess as your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Michael, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, All glory and honor is yours forever and ever. And at the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, 
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin, and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer to each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. In the morning when the world was become, and I danced in the moon and the stars and the sun, and I came down from heaven and I danced on the earth at Bethlehem, I had my birth. Dance then. Wherever you may be, I am the Lord of the Dancity, and I'll lead you home. Wherever you may be, and I'll lead you all in the Dancity. I dance for the scribe and the Pharisee, but they would not dance, and they wouldn't follow me. I dance for the fishermen, for James and John, they came with me, and the dance went on. Dance then, wherever you may be, I am the Lord of the dance at and I'll lead you all, wherever you may be, and I'll lead you all in the dance at I danced 
on the Sabbath, and I cured the lame. The holy people sat, it was a shame. They waved, and they stripped, and they hung me high, and left me there on a cross to die. Once then, wherever you may be, I am the Lord of the density, and I'll lead you all wherever you may be, and I'll lead you all in the density. On a Friday when the sky turned black It's hard to dance with the devil on your back They buried my body and they thought I'd come But I am the dance and I still go on Dance then wherever you may be I am the Lord of the density, and I'll lead you all wherever you may be, and I'll lead you all in the density. In the morning when the world was begun And I danced in the moon and the stars and the sun And I came down from heaven and I danced on the earth At Bethlehem I had my birth
We do have a few announcements for the weekend. Please continue to sign up for Mass every weekend. More and more people are starting to come back to church and fudging a little bit on the numbers. Remember, we have an extra Mass. We have a fifth Mass on the weekend. Six o'clock is usually the thinnest of the ones, so if you need a little more breathing room, probably the six o'clock or even sometimes the 5.30 might be the best to attend. This time of the year, our four o'clock and our 10 o'clock are the ones that always kind of go sky high, uh, and they always pack up. So we appreciate your cooperation in that regard. Uh, Continue to come to all of our ministry meetings throughout the week in person. For example, the youth group, uh, grief share, and other opportunities. Uh, Registration forms are due for the One Book, One Church study. Uh, For that particular book, we'll be reading, and if you didn't get a copy, there's some that are available in the table in the back of the church where you walked in, grab one, they're yours to take, and it's a gift from the parish to you all. The Knights and the Ladies will be having their monthly meeting on the 1st of September, and that'll be at 7 o'clock in the Hall of Saints in various rooms. Check out the bulletin for further details. And Margaret's Men, we thought it was last week, but it's actually this week, and it's going to be on the 3rd of September at 6. Are you invited to wear your mask, observe social distancing, and participate in that way? And again, we thank you in advance for your contributions to help our friends and neighbors in Lake Charles. The gospel was a perfect one. Maybe it's an opportunity this weekend for us to sacrifice something during the week so that we can give somebody else a little something to pick them up and help them get back uh, to what normalcy will be for them for a little while. And remember, you can give on our website, you can give on our PayPal account, or you could just bring the gift cards or cash into the parish office. We appreciate your generosity in all the ways. Those people have helped us in the past, so it's time for us to go back and help in return. And if you're a guest or visitor, do come back. We love you to worship with us every weekend here at St. Margaret. Let us stand and pray. Renewed by this bread from the heavenly table, we beseech you, Lord, that being the food of charity, it may confirm our hearts and stir us to serve you and our neighbor. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and proclaim the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God.